Metroid is one of those franchises that has consistent hiatuses. It took Nintendo 8 years to release a new Metroid title after Super Metroid, and in 2010, another 7 years for another Metroid title. I've been waiting about 15 years for Metroid Dread ever since it was announced in Metroid Prime 3 and some of the data files that you found scoping around your ship. But it's just so nice to be talking about one of my favorite series of all time, and especially Prime has a special place in my heart since it was my first Metroid game, and that's why I wanted to compare it to the trilogy and see how that fares and what differences you guys will see. Welcome to A Port vs. Port, a video series highlighting the differences and the similarities of the vanilla and port versions of a singular title. We all know that at the end of the day, Prime Trilogy will come on the Switch, so I think right now is a good time to be talking Metroid. Let's get into it. Metroid had a difficult advancement from 2D into 3D in comparison with other Nintendo franchises. Prime had similar development issues to Metroid Dread. Nintendo ruminated on both titles for a lengthy period because of development not meeting up to their vision. In Prime's case, adapting a 2D platformer into 3D was a laborious task. Retro Studios adapted Samus' experience into first person. It also adapted 3D exploration, puzzle solving, and lore building together to set up an immersive and unforgettable experience. Prime truly is the best at immersing you into its world by having rainfall on your visor or alien guts spilling onto your face. It fully embraces the fact that you, the player, are the famous bounty hunter in the suit. The strength of the GameCube leads Prime to be one of the console's first jump into 480p using component cables. Colors are full of vibrant hues and models are rich in high quality textures and detail. My absolute favorite feature of the GameCube is the controller. Prime takes full advantage of its analog triggers with a mid-L squeeze allowing you to strafe and a full squeeze to lock on. The most important part, at least subjectively, is the claw. This may be a huge visual trigger for many, but attacking using A and strafing with B makes you untouchable and something I have trouble replicating with the Wii Remote. More on that later. So I know it's a redundant to say that the GameCube has its advantages because of the controller and it is considered one of the best controllers in gaming history. However, what kind of special features are we going to be seeing with the Prime 1 on the GameCube? And they're pretty cool if you know what they are. Plastered all over the manual in the Prima Guide is the ability to transfer special content from Metroid Fusion to Prime. Following special conditions, if you connect a Game Boy Advance to the GameCube, the Fusion Suit becomes your first unlockable. This is a playable skin from start to finish and changes colors from Fusion Suit changes. Doing so a second time unlocks a playable NES version of Metroid. Sharp features on the RetroTink do little to remedy the soft pixels. While the NES ROM is far from perfect, it is a welcome feature many fans will embrace. GameCube Prime for many, including myself, is the true de facto version to play, but for another majority, the trilogy has a deck full of cards that stands out from its vanilla predecessor. The Prime Trilogy aims to capture the original GameCube and Wii experiences, adding new control schemes or tweaks to modernize them for 2009 standards. We will look at the Prime 1 Trilogy features and how that tracks back to the GameCube's release. The 16x9 is our most obvious implementation, taking the full screen real estate of your HDTV in the Wii's 480p mode. The original 4x3 dynamic menu of the GameCube is absent in favor of the trilogy's unified menu encompassing all three games. This is your one-stop shop to toggle different options and settings that affect all three titles here. 
Prime 1 is an amalgamation of converting 4x3 into 16x9. What I mean by that is that Prime 1 isn't a true 100% 16x9, and I'll further describe what I mean. Metroid Prime is littered with in-game cutscenes that were previously rendered in 4x3 on the GameCube. For reasons unknown, Retro has ineffectively scaled the 4x3 image into 16x9, meaning anything that was in frame is trimmed off. This will change the focal point of various shots that frame Samus in the middle and may crop her depending on the situation. The example I love to compare this situation to is Capcom's Resident Evil remake that scales 4x3 pre-rendered backgrounds into 16x9. I think you get my point here. The gameplay itself is a true 16x9, allowing you to see further beyond what the original GameCube release displays. Of course, this added perspective increases peripheral vision and the space on your TV. The HUD is a bigger amalgamation stretching 4x3 to 16x9. Right here you can see the icon for your visors having a different shape entirely from a perfect square to a rectangle. It might have taken Retro an incredibly long time to replicate the same HD into 16x9, which makes sense for this change. Realistically, this change will not affect many people's perspective on the title, but I think it's a fact worth pointing out. Motion controls might make or break your gaming experience. Retro excluded GameCube and traditional controls for an overhauled motion control reminiscent of Metroid Prime 3. If you love the motion controls and intuitive aiming perspective of 3, this will make you feel right at home, and personally, I'm happy with what Retro made the perfect control scheme for motion controls using every positive aspect of the Wii. A pointing reticle allows you to target enemies without using a traditional free look, all the while empowering you to be locked on the targets while maintaining a free look. The learning curve for this scheme can be immense if you are coming from clawing the GameCube controller like myself. The gameplay recordings showcase how much different traditional versus motion control affect your game, but this too can be a subjective matter. I'm a pretty lazy guy, so being able to sit forward to aim your Wii Remote gets tiring pretty quickly. This trilogy release gave Retro a chance to go back to add the same GameCube functions like NES Metroid and Fusion Suit after completion. Similar to Prime 3, Retro incorporated an achievement system that grants players points to unlock concept art, game tracks, and other Metroid-related media. I always miss games having this concept art in their releases, encouraging me to go back and collecting as many as I can possible. And so, after these features, how is the game's final presentation held up against the GameCube? I've noticed that colors are a bit more muted from the GameCube's vibrant colors, but this could be because of my RetroTINK on the Wii or my Wii U's HDMI output of the Wii looking a little softer. Either way, I find this worth mentioning along with more jagged edges with rougher textures being more apparent. This could be, however, to the 4x3 scale to 16x9, bringing these nuances to a focal point. Retro went back to add bloom to particular lighting fixtures such as the nodes from the beginning of the game as well as other areas. Prime Trilogy now holds a solid 60 frames in its drop frames on the GameCube, so I appreciate them going back to optimize this title. Even audio effects have changed, with several sound effects having a staggering difference from the original, most likely imported from Prime 3. The trilogy provides an all-in-one package to Nintendo's best and only first-person adventure. You see, there's honestly a reason why I do these ports versus ports, so you guys can see some of the differences and how it fares against the original. And you can see how close both the GameCube and the Wii is, but I think the little subtleties really make the version for the individual, and that's why, let's say for me, I prefer the GameCube just because I adore the GameCube controller, but I do appreciate the 16x9, even though it's a weird amalgamation, it's it, it's worth playing, I think. But let's go into a classic port versus port feature that I love to do, and compare the footage side by side, see what it works for you guys, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to be playing it, and you're going to be deciding. So, let's begin.
And that's it for the port versus port. And honestly, Prime 1 really does have a special place in my heart. It was my first Metroid game right next to Fusion. And then eventually I got into Zero Mission and the other ones. But honestly, I felt like I got into the golden age of Metroid. And it's just, it makes me so happy to be talking about Metroid Dread. I just finished it recently and it's honestly one of my favorite games in the entire franchise. So props to Nintendo for making such a beautiful title and really taking their time with it. And you know, props to Retro for making an even better Wii port on the trilogy. And I'm really hoping to see this on the Switch. I think inevitably it's gonna happen. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. But what do you guys think? What do you prefer for Metroid Prime? Do you prefer it on the GameCube or on the Wii? Or are you looking forward to it on the Switch because we know it's gonna be there at the end of the day? Let me know down in the comments below. and Let's have a nice little discussion about it. If you're interested in following me, all of my socials will be down below. And I did wanna give a special thanks to Tells Rob, Angry Bananas, and Power Matt for supporting the channel, as well as these individuals on right here. And if you want to see more of what I do and support the channel, you can see more of the videos right here. Thank you guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. We'll have more here for you soon. Take care.